it's really weird when they bring up the Bible now. Like, I'll be honest with you. I got into a lot of arguments about what the Bible said and didn't say way before I'd read the thing. I mean, I guess there wouldn't be much point in pretending otherwise, since you can still go back in the archives of this show and listen to me do it. But I, I figured it was fair since the person I was arguing with invariably also hadn't read the Bible. Yeah, sure, we were two blind people arguing about the color of a dish towel, but I still trusted my sources more than theirs. And for reasons that are probably obvious, it was way less awkward back then. You know, because we would skirt up towards the edge of having to actually know what we're talking about, but then we would back away mutually. But nowadays, I just I run up to that edge, I dive off, I get a mile or so down, and then I look back up at the precipice and I see them standing there admitting that they uh, you know, just mostly only read the parts in the chick tracks. That makes it really fucking weird. Of course, it doesn't happen very often anymore. You know, it's not that I argue with Christians less or anything, but there's this subtle vetting process that they're using, and I think most of them figure out pretty early on that I know more about the Bible than them. And since so few of their go-to arguments are based on anything biblical, they don't have to change strategies much, you know, to steer wide of the Bible altogether in their arguments, but it does still happen. And then it gets fucking weird because the Bible doesn't just say shit they don't know about. It doesn't just lack the things that they think are there. It's not even the kind of thing that they think it is. Right, like based on the disparate sentences their pastors cherry pick for them, they get the impression that it's some kind of collection of wisdom mixed with some Aesop's fables type parables and some rules to live by. They think it's a collection of stories or a, a repository of moral pronouncements or an examination of theology. And well, a clever enough pastor can pluck out a couple dozen sentences that would reinforce any of those misconceptions. Nobody could read any significant percentage of the book and maintain them. See, the, the problem is that the Bible isn't pretending to be what all these Christian leaders are pretending it is. You know, ask a Christian what the Bible is or, or what it's about, and you'll get descriptions that no objective person could attach to that book. You know, set aside the literalists and shit who would call it the perfect word of God. Think one of those uber flimsy liberal definitions that settle for like, you know, divinely inspired effort to understand God's nature or something. I mean, Yes, it's not divinely inspired, but beyond that, it's not an effort to understand God's nature. It's a story about a guy who made poop bread. It's a list of people's great, 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 great grandfathers. It's a letter from an ungrateful house guest that thinks you could have been a bit more accommodating. At no point could it even be mistaken for the thing that virtually every Christian will tell you it is. But most Christians don't know that because they've never read the damn thing. And even many who have read it don't know because they were told what it was so emphatically and so often before they read it that it never occurred to them how different it actually turned out to be. But consider the disparity, right? The authors of the Bible clearly had no fucking clue that people were going to be reading this shit thousands of years later. And it's patently obvious as you read it, like, like the parts where it invokes physical evidence for a story. Right, like everybody piled up a rock to commemorate that moment. And even today, you can go to the river and see that pile of rocks. Well, you know, set aside how dumb the, oh, yeah, well, then where did this pile of rocks come from argument is. And consider the fact that they were writing that shit thousands of years ago. Like, needless to say, that pile of rocks isn't there anymore. That river's not there anymore in many instances. Now, obviously, you wouldn't write something like that if you were divinely inspired by a perfect being because a perfect being would know this book is going to be around thousands of years later, you know, after people have decided to move those rocks. But, but, but it also isn't something a person would write if they thought that they were divinely inspired, or if they even had the vaguest notion that people were going to be reading this thing for a long time, or even if they were contemplating the nature of God. The question they're tackling isn't, what is God, or how should we live in the world? It's, where the fuck did that big pile of rocks come from? It should come as no surprise, then, that people who dig into the book trying to find answers for questions unrelated to rock pile origins come up wanting. Of course, on the rare occasion I find myself arguing the Bible with a Christian these days, they're generally not going to be deploying the most liberal possible definition for the Bible. So I find myself arguing with people who actually want to argue that it's a book of answers handed down from on high and authored directly from Jesus of Nazareth with a goddamn quill pen. And sure, that's an argument I can win. But like I said, it's awkward as all hell. When my knowledge was limited to, you know, but yeah, but what about these passages that don't fit your description? We could dance around that for quite a while. But now my argument is you might as well have just called the Bible a potato. 
right? It, it's harder at that point to find a comfortable place to land because A, where do you even start the the Bible isn't a potato argument? And B, what possible middle ground are you going to land on between random collection of old papers religious people had and potato? Right. Like, to be clear, if atheists had the opportunity to rewrite the Bible for the express purpose of making it hard for our opponents in an argument to defend, I don't think we'd change a goddamn word. So the argument can't even be about interpretation. They have to argue that the book doesn't say what it says. And I guess anybody can see how that gets awkward real quick.